Hey everyone, welcome to episode three in this video series where we are putting together the Phoenix Model 20cc Zero ARF. In this episode, we're gonna do everything in the tail. We're going to mount the horizontal stab, we're gonna mount the rudder and both elevators, hook up the servos, all the connections, and get the tail wheel set up and everything in the back of the airplane ready to go. Before we get started, I wanna ask a favor. Give me one and a half to two minutes. I'm gonna go over some history about the tail codes of the Zeros and other Japanese World War II aircraft. And it's gonna to relate to as we identify what model this is. So let's talk about some tail codes. We'll head back down to Dayton to see the real Model 21 and then we'll hit the bench and get to work. Since we're working on the tail, I figured this would be a good time to talk about the tail codes. So first off, this model we're working on is marked as AI-102. Now, these tail codes can clue us into a lot of details, and let's take this model for example. The first character, A, equals the carrier division, so A being the first carrier division, B is the second, and the fifth carrier division would be the letter E, and so on and so on. The next group of characters immediately after the first identifies the specific carrier the plane was assigned to. At the time of the Pearl Harbor attack in December of 1941, AI represented the Akagi aircraft carrier. After the dash, there was a three-digit code. The first digit here denotes the aircraft type. One identified fighters, so such as A6M Zeros. Two identified dive bombers, such as the Aichi D-3A Val. And then three identified torpedo bombers, such as the Nakajima B-5N Kate. So, AI-102 tells us that it was the second fighter of the squadron assigned to the Akagi aircraft carrier. So let's look at the real Model 21-0 at the Air Force Museum. It's marked as A1-3-102. In November of 1942, the tail codes and fuselage markings were revised. So for example, the Hiyo carrier in the second carrier division was A2-1 with one red fuselage band. A1-3 represented the Zuiho carrier, and that did not have any fuselage bands. And the last three digit code was the same. So A1-3-102 tells us that it was the second plane of the fighter squadron assigned to the Zuiho carrier. Going through all the footage, I realized I missed this clip of unboxing and unwrapping the horizontal stabilizer and elevator from the unboxing video. So I thought I'd throw it in uh, right here, just so you can see how it's packaged up. And I also wanted to show you that the stab and elevator are flat, there are no airfoils, and on top of that, all the other surfaces utilize pin hinges, and in this case, the elevator uses your typical CA hinges. I could not tell the difference between the top or bottom. The only difference I can see is there's two little circles right there. I believe that's the bottom based on pictures I've seen on the internet. Here's all the equipment we're gonna use for the elevators. And you can see I have the CA hinges there. I have the pins in there to keep those hinges centered as we put them in. We have the control horns. We have that domino there that's gonna link the two elevator halves, and we have the push rods down in front there. So here's everything we need to go ahead and put the elevator in. So first things first, we need to mount the horizontal stabilizer. So there is a slot in the rear that you cut an opening in the covering, slide this in, slide it all the way back and measure so to make sure this thing's centered and then use epoxy of your choice. So take your time, measure, because once this glue dries, it's going to be pretty permanent. So I like using Scotch Weld, and in fact, I found some 420 black, and I was always kind of curious would I ever use it, and it looks um, like since the printed on covering is silver and we have the black panel lines, I figured I'd give it a try here, and these next few shots will show you the results. I 
took my time and was really careful to get a nice fold under uh, of the covering and get a nice, really small seam of this 420 black. And you can kind of see it here. And in fact, I hope you don't really see it here because that tells me that this is a good choice to use some black epoxy on the back of this model. So these next few shots will show you what I'm talking about. You can see here that I have not CA'd the elevator halves yet because the pin's still sticking up there. But just showing you how I mounted the horizontal stabilizer. Took my time, it's not messy whatsoever. And that black 3M epoxy really works well on this paint scheme. So after mounting the horizontal stabilizer, we have to then do the pin hinges for the rudder and the vertical stab. And here's a shot of me mixing up that 420 Scotch Weld black, just to kind of show you what it looks like being mixed up as we do the three pin hinges. And the tail wheel goes in, there's a bracket that goes up through the fuselage from the tail wheel into the very bottom hole on that rudder. And then this allows you to connect the tail wheel and put on that cover that you have to cut out just a slight portion in the front there to get that to fit and it looks nice. Here's a little tip that I learned from the Ducias, actually Mr. Ducia and Jace. Uh, I've seen them do this a bunch of times. This is putting these servo grommets in brand new servos and you put all four grommets on one driver and you just kind of shove them up from the bottom and uh, it doesn't look that satisfying, but believe me, it's something, <laughs> this is one of the silly things I love doing. So I thought I'd pass it on. Thank you for the Ducias for showing me that. And here are the servos, the elevator servo and the rudder servo doing their thing, hooked up to the high-tech HFP30 servo tester. You can see the domino there connecting both elevator halves to the elevator servo. And I changed out the, the connector to one of those quick links on the elevator because I was able to utilize one of the push rods that had a threaded end. So uh, here is a view from behind, the rudder and both elevators synced up also just showing you that full range of motion. And here's a view from the bottom. You can see how the tail wheel articulates with the rudder, but we are looking good. We have all the surfaces connected up. The tail is pretty much done. I have everything centered and I have the throws all set by the book. So we're ready to move on to the cowling. All right, let's put the wing on and just like in the last episode, we'll get a progress shot and some views of what the plane looks like so far, especially now that we have both stabilizers connected and the servos up and running. I wanted to show you what putting the wing on looks like. You might think this is awkward, but this is sort of par for the course for a warbird of this size. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how this goes on. To secure the wing, you have two plastic thumb screws uh, with a piece of wood to kind of sandwich it down. Now, I would prefer to have these plastic screws actually have either a Phillips head or a socket head or something because this is sped up four times to show you how long it's gonna take to twist these things closed. So with a little mini driver, it'd be nice to just kind of go take your time and, and close those down. So here is some ending shots with the wing on. You can see how the fuselage is pretty open and you can see the wing. Uh, it's it's wide open down there. And this is everything, obviously, none of the wires have been run yet, nothing's installed. But just wanted to show you what it looks like to this point. And we're just gonna go outside in the backyard again and get some shots of this is zero and its tail. AI-102, and so now we've got the tail all put together. We learned a little bit about the zero tail codes, and next episode we are going to be working on mounting the motor, the cowl, the dummy radial. So while this one was a little bit light, the next one I imagine is gonna be a little bit longer, maybe even, maybe even split up into two episodes. So guys, everyone, thanks for tuning in.